like to call the meeting to order the uh, Capital Improvement Committee meeting for March 19, 2019, 10 a.m., but it's now 10.08. My apologies if there was any question on when the meeting was. I think I sent out an agenda that said Tuesday and, a, and an email oh, that said Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get an agenda. Oh, well, yeah. This one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean on the... I, I, email. I, 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 hear I had them posted the last meeting the same day, so I posted them both the same day so yeah. I didn't forget. So first on the agenda is uh, water sewer, so we'll hear from the department head, uh, Bob Sullivan, in regards to uh, the water sewer projects. Your, uh, top here messed up, so from the, the copies aren't too much for this. One here. Okay. Take this set. Everyone set. Ready when you are. So welcome. Priority threes. One is on sewer, the other is on water. Okay. So the, the top page that you had there was the, the sewer. Okay. <coughs> All right. So the first one, I'll just go with the uh, the wastewater system master plan. Uh, we've discussed this one over the past several years. Actually, I guess I've had it on this since 2009. So that's to develop a, uh, conduct a study and develop a master plan for the town sewer, um, just to look at seeing where where it makes sense to expand, um, develop to develop projections through the year like 2040. Uh, so it's a, like a 20 year master plan. Um, so it would identify any of the potential areas for development and help come up with a budgeting process for the sewer system for expansion. <coughs> um, you know, we put in $200,000, that's uh, roughly the engineer said that that would be a good start to get going. <laughs> um, whether that could complete it or not, we're not sure, but they said it would probably be a phased project to start working on. Um, I guess that's about it for that one. Do you have any questions on, that's a priority three, you said? Any yeah. Questions? I mean, any of the committee members on that? Um, okay, I'm just sorting <laughs> through all this. Can you say something before you go too far? Sure. It's kind of stuck in my brain. Up here for a um, the status of the meeting. So this meeting was posted on March 12th, so over a week ago. When this committee determined its schedule for this week, the clerk posted the schedule. It didn't get put on the website for whatever reason. So to be on the safe side of the Open Meetings Act, remember you can still, you have a quorum. You can get reports the same way you would get reports from the town administrator and department heads. And you can ask questions the same way you would if we sent you these things in email. What you cannot do today is deliberate in any way, shape, or form. So advocate for or against any project. Try to sort amongst different projects so you can receive the report and ask questions to be on the safe side. You have to schedule any votes or deliberation for Friday's meeting, and we'll make sure that Friday's meeting gets posted on the website. It's important that everybody who's a chair now realize that they need to both post here at the Municipal Center, at the other popular places we usually post at the library, and Suzanne needs a copy and, and, and Chris needs a copy for the website to make sure that it gets locked into the website, because a lot of people will go to the website to determine whether a meeting's happening or not. So that's 
But to not have these, look at all this material that you're going to be presented with today, to not have this general discussion of what the departments, it would just delay your work to the point where we would have to start having meetings back to back almost every day, so let's not do that. But I just <coughs> caution members not to go beyond a I, factual I question. think it was on the new website, though. Am I correct? No. I, no. That's why I that's what, sent my email. I, I had it on my calendar because we, I sat through your meeting and wrote things down. But mm -hmm. if I went to the website and looked to confirm, I, I didn't see it. But it was posted here, correct? Yeah, it's been posted here, so the, the yeah. clerk timestamped it. But the new version of the law requires the website posting. So okay, I was unaware of that. No. But this is how we've been proceeding all along with due to quorum issues and everything else. You're receiving reports and ask questions, but. So we have a couple of new members. They're not here. So that now we don't have a quorum with five. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, you do, do have. You do have. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you're even closer to the edge here. But because you have a quorum, you have to be very careful not to deliberate in any way, shape, or form because of that glitch with the notice. Okay. You, know, you, you partially posted it. Um, I think that's why one member chose not to come because it wasn't clear if the meeting had been properly noticed. But we've been doing this all along. We've even done this with FinCom. We're just having difficulties getting quorums, and, and even FinCom messed up their posting, but they caught it in time. The very last minute they caught it, and the clerk came in on Friday afternoon to post it. So that would be a legal meeting. This is just, we got to tighten up on this, this whole thing. But you can still do this. I mean, we're on very safe ground, provided you don't deliberate in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so, so the Friday. I'll go through and explain. Explain mine, and yep. you guys can take it home and do what you so, want. Yeah. Deliberate over. But you can ask <coughs> questions about what the content here. So has Friday been posted on the website? We have time. This is 48 hours, so right. we'll make sure that it gets. I want. That's what I'm going to do right now, and then before <coughs> we leave, we can confirm that it's been done. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, Bob. Uh -huh. So, does anyone have any questions on that one? I don't believe so. So that's I, just a, that's your priority three, right? And it's been on since two thousand nine. Oh, yeah. All right. So the rest of them are all basically water mains. Um, okay. Water mains that need to be replaced or installed. Um, the the one the very last one in the pamphlet here. I didn't put department priorities on a lot of these yeah. at the end just because I have so many in here. And I'll explain as to what there's a lot of them in here that you know, do not have to be done right now, but a lot of them, you know, me and John get together and meet to discuss what's going on in each of our departments. Um, and I know he's got a lot of paving projects coming up, and some of these, you know, we kind of got stiffed a little bit on the Manchog Street because <laughs> the state does that one, and they called us up and said, yeah, in two weeks we're coming in to pay. I don't think we even got that much of a notice. <laughs> yeah, I know, because yeah. I questioned you about, mm -hmm. God, it's awful. Mm -hmm. And the next, you said, looks like we just got notice. Yeah. Yeah, now the water main that's in Manchog Street yeah. is like 1910. Mm -hmm. So it's over 100 years old. And we should have replaced it before they paved, but we didn't have any time. And even if we tried to get it replaced yeah. in that amount of time, the road would be destroyed because everything would settle and mm -hmm. you know, it just wouldn't work right. So no you know, me and John get together and no we leaks. right, yeah. <coughs> well, we had two breaks on that road mm -hmm. just before they paved it. Yeah. So oh. um, you know, you hate to have an old line like that in the road yeah. when they pave it, and you have a break and you got to mm -hmm. rip it up again. Yeah. So there's a lot of these in the back that I don't have prior department priorities on, and a lot of them are just to have them out there so that people understand these lines really should be replaced. And you know, like I said, me and John get together. Trying to work out a paving plan with the water lines. Right. So if we mm -hmm. if we know that he's got <coughs> major paving coming up, like on Main Street, um, and then we we'll repave Southwest Main. And there's a section there that should be replaced up to where camp meeting is. Mm -hmm. But after that, it's all ductile iron, so you should be good there. But there's that section from like Common Street down to camp meeting that should be replaced. We had two breaks on that line already because um, it's an old cast iron line. <coughs> so all those all those lines are in here with 
with rough estimates on how much it would cost to do this. Um, <clears throat> the very last one on in the package um, says Davis Street, 12 inch water main from high school, approximately 6,000 feet. So mm -hmm. that one, uh, it's roughly 1.75 million. Um, that one got put in because there's discussions and I have to meet with the selectmen tonight about running water and sewer down to like that industrial area, mm -hmm. uh, that end of town. Um, so there's some potential projects there. So like I said, I didn't put a department priority on that, but you know, what's going on in town with development or like I said, road, road mm -hmm. paving or whatever, um, you know, that's, that kind of dictates some of the priority on these. <coughs> And this price is that I know we talked about it, Bob. Does that include the paving? This does not? not include paving. None of these include paving. Okay. I've, I was going to sit down and try to put together the mm -hmm. math. I, mean, I have a, an idea on how to calculate yeah. how many ton of asphalt sure. you need, and I know you know the prices. Yep. Um, I will try to put together something for yeah, that. We can sit down and figure if, that out. At mm -hmm. least so we have an idea of mm -hmm. what extra cost if we don't just do a trench. Yep. If you want to do something yes. road. Well, if we're going down Davis Street, let's face it, that whole road needs to be done. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. I'm going to interrupt you again, Mr. Chairman. The, the, the information was reported in error by one of your members. This meeting is legally posted. It is on the website. So when you, you have to click on the day, the, the column on the right-hand side underneath the calendar is only a partial listing. It's, it hits the highlights. It picks up the first item for each day. But if you click on more events or you click on the actual day on the calendar, it is there. It has been there for over a week. And so is Friday's meeting. They are properly posted. So you can do whatever I did them both at the same meeting. time. I sent them both to Christine right, at the same time. Because the website is new, we mm -hmm. still have people who are struggling to, to navigate. It, it's not immediately <coughs> It's not going to jump out at people. It's not going to just you know, news flash and blink in your eyes when you log, first log on to the website. Oh, there's a capital meeting. <laughs> it doesn't do that. You have to go to the calendar, click on the date of interest, and it is there. It's properly done. That is what all of the state agencies do. That's what the calendar does. So just clarified that with the clerk who was upset that we thought we weren't having a <laughs> correct meeting. You can do, you have all your, you have, I've Probably never had to worry well. whenever I've given her something to be posted. I know, but we're so that's doing this <laughs> transition, and, you know, I just, members of the committee would be wise to inquire with the, the town clerk before going off and saying the meeting is posted at Apples. That's all I can say. So, I again, I interrupt you, <laughs> but... Sorry. I try to, I try to, well, I'm not, I'm not always reliable. Sometimes I, I sent out, I think I said the meeting was Monday and then gave you a Tuesday agenda. So if there's any confusion as far as that goes. And I even called John yesterday because I had people text him, I won't be able to make the meeting this morning. And I'm like, we don't have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like. Okay. No, I just now I'm confused. if our meeting was still on Tuesday. Right. Because sometimes, right. you know. You get a information that people aren't making it, so yeah. And since FinCom was posted about ten times on that the website, it. Um, <coughs> uh -oh. All right. Okay. So sorry for the really interruptions, Rob. Yeah. Uh, Bob, let's. Uh, <laughs> you can just do whatever you want. Yep. <coughs> just, uh -oh. just tear through. <laughs> just tear through whatever. Just go through your organized your 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 priority ones, and then when we get to the other ones, we'll just say this isn't a priority, but it's been here. Yeah. So, like I said, I just pulled up that the last one was the Davis Street one just because that's on the select meeting tonight. Um, so that one got added. <coughs> so the priority one would be the Gilboa Street 12 inch main from North Street to the existing 12 inch down by the mill. That would install about 3,000 feet of, of main. It would increase the reliability and available fire protection for that area of town. Um, it was listed in the master plan as a 2012 project and it was, it's been submitted since 2009, but it's been submitted as part of the master plan since 2011. Okay. So the estimated cost is about 710000 for that project. 
um, question. So you're saying town meeting funds partial. So you're saying half from water sewer or? We, we go through this every, every year. year. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know how or at what point we set up some kind of meeting to discuss percentages. Um, we just come up with a standard percentage mm -hmm. or uh, case by case basis. I think a rule of thumb is 50-50 personally, but mm -hmm. that's, I could be totally all wet. So, so then we get into this, <coughs> that's yeah. why I ask right. every year. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, passing by the pump house by Glen Street, I noticed there are two hydrants there. Is that where you fill up your, your pump trucks and stuff like that? No, it's that just, it just happens to be where there is one hydrant. Yeah. Uh, well, there's two there. What, what happened was when they built that pump station, me and John had tried to to beat the paving <laughs> yeah. before so we ran lines in already yeah. so we ran new lines in <coughs> but then in order to switch over without interruption yeah. we had to run a line and then to terminate the old lines they put hydrants at the end yeah. so one is on the high service side and one is on the low service side yeah. and there's there's a couple reasons for it one he has more connections two is if there's a problem with the pump station we can get a portable pump and hook it up between the two yeah. hydrants and perform the same function. Yeah. No, I guess what I was trying to, and uh, <coughs> actually my thoughts are backwards, but um, is how much water do you actually use from the pump stations and to f try to figure out um, the percentage of fire's use of, of water in town, but it doesn't really, if you're putting in a 12 inch water main, that doesn't tell you how yeah, much water you're using right there's no there's way to there's fire. no way to give yeah. the actual percentage of what he would use as opposed to us um, it's just things that you can't really say it's a blanket 50 50 can't I predict mean. it you right so <clears throat> like say we were going to run this the the 12 inch line from the high school down mm -hmm. and we weren't going to pick up any connections but it's solely to get to a point we pick up the connections for a certain area for a certain business um, but we're not we're never going to make that money on a, you know I, I run as an enterprise fund I have to look at it from a business standpoint and if I say I'm going to spend two million dollars to make three hundred dollars a year it's a no <laughs> but if it's going to increase the tax revenue by four million dollars a year now you got to look at it and say alright does the mm -hmm. town think it's worth investing two million dollars to get four million a year from where from potential commercial or, or industrial activity down there. It, Galboa. Well, that one's Davis Street, but that's just an and example. Then the bonus is the fire protection. Right, and then you get fire protection at that end of town, which you didn't have. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's just that I, I, in my, my feeling is the emphasis should be on the user. I know fire needs right. it, but I don't think it's a 50-50 break. I think the users, and they have to pay and what a betterment fee or something like that when something like this happens or it all depends on how it's set up when it goes in <clears throat> I mean I've had I've had towns um, Southbridge for instance they required a company that wanted to ins to have water run up to their property they required them to run the line all the way up and another one all the way back to make a loop because they didn't want a single line mm -hmm. and it was hundreds of millions of dollars not and it's just for one customer they put it on the customer because they said, hey, you want the water, you got to pay for it. So the town didn't pay for it. They made that customer pay for it. Mm -hmm. So it's all a, a matter of the needs and who's going to benefit more. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a business decision, I mean, you could go that route and say, hey, you know, we're not going to do any expansion unless somebody else wants it and they pay to put it in. So there's a bunch of different ways to handle that. Mm -hmm. um, it would be like running sewer up to where they wanted to have a safety complex. Um, I mean, I've looked at all the connections and everything going up to where the fire department is, and I would pick up very, very little usage and customers because because of the zoning and the, the, the lot sizes and everything else. So I wouldn't pick up very many customers. So it wouldn't be worth, worth it for me to spend $4 million to put sewer to get it up to the gazebo or wherever they wanted it at that time because there's no potential to ever recover that money. But if there's other interests and other 
businesses that go in, I mean, that, that the corner there on Rydell and, and Maine, mm -hmm. if a business went in there that's going to make $100 million a year and they need sewer or they can't put in their business, then they'll pay the money to put it in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so like I said, I mean, this project, if it's going to bring in X amount of millions of dollars to run the line down, t down to Davis Street, does it make sense for the town to pay a portion to get that line done in order to get the tax revenue? Correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but the that water booster station was done a few years ago through a capital <coughs> project. And Correct. if I remember correctly, that was a 50-50 deal mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. far as <coughs> Correct. between splitting it up between the enterprise mm -hmm. fund and the town. Yes. So that's just an example of, that's mm -hmm. why I say I'm pretty sure it was, it's a rule of thumb to start anyway. Mm -hmm. Like and I said, I mean, it's just a, it, it, you really can't just do kind of a blanket 50-50. Right. You really have to look at them on a case-by-case -case basis, whether right. whether it makes sense to do it or not. Exactly. And as far, I mean, I may be wrong, but to try to estimate how much water used. One it fire. Depends. I have one no fire, clue. Could I could have a fire it, where right? I do. Yeah. Millions I, of I, gallons I, of water, or I have one where I could do 30 gallons. Yeah, it's <laughs> just providing some sort of statistics. Yeah, right. You know, it's, it's validating. And, and if I get a fire that big, big enough, it's usually going to result in, if it's, it go by the ratio in town, it's probably going to be out of the hydrant district. Now I'm going to try to keep track of trucks that are coming in and fill it off <coughs> hydrants that I know nothing about. It just... <laughs> You sort of lose track. No, but I would think there'd be a meter there or something. That no, there's no says. meter. <laughs> a meter would just cause problems for them. That you don't want anything that can break or block the line or anything. Or if he knows how much water he's putting in the truck, it's just you know, it's it's. Me and Kent have gone round and round about this for for years. That sort of information, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know, but they used to end up pulling it out of the reservoir. Yeah, I know, and that's. I mean, I you know? lived in a house in Vermont, and there was a fire pond right, right next yeah. to it. You know, yeah. it was. Uh, that's the way they did it, and I yeah. apparently you you get guckamuck out of it, so you don't want to do that anymore. But it served. We do if we have to. Yeah, yeah, right. we've, yeah. we've done it. Yeah, sure. The last yeah. time we had a fire on Gilboa, Gilboa. We, yeah. we had to draft out of the, and it, you know nothing. Which is why that line. Is stranger than <laughs> operating a hand line, putting a fire out when a trout comes out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh really? <laughs> got the size. <laughs> Go ahead, Bob. All right, Bob. So, All right so I mean. And that's the, your top priority. Yeah, the Gilboa Street, for the reason that the chief just said, um, they had to draft out of the pond because they hooked onto that hydrant and they just ran out of water. Yeah. You, know, you just, you can't pull enough water through that line. It's too small. <coughs> it, but that, again, that the line going down Gilboa Street meets our domestic needs. So the customers down there don't need more water. It's really just to increase the fire protection and reliability down there. Yeah, and so it's also <coughs> to um, serve a right, industrial. Right, potentially serve more water right, for the commercial and, and a private industry owns it right now. Mm -hmm. And so they would, it would benefit their then. selling price <coughs> if they sold Correct. stuff. So there's a user. And that's who paid for the line to the Dunkin' Donuts, right? Am I correct from Guilford? It was. The so Shell station yeah, paid for that right. because Shell contaminated their own well. Right. Mm -hmm. So they paid to, mm -hmm. the, where we want to go down to connect to, they paid for the, that new line going all the way down mm -hmm. from the mill to the Dunkin' Donuts. And we <coughs> also have a situation where Granutech put that big building in the back and the previous chief had them sprinkler it and there's no water there. No water. But everything's in there so that if there's Granutech. ever water up there, that building will be sprinkled. So that's the priority one. Um, priority two would be North Street, a 16-inch water main from Maine to Gilboa. From Maine to Gilboa. Actually, it's down to uh, Charles Street now at this point. Because <coughs> we just replace water main going through the bridge. <coughs> and that would just complete that section to go from the 16-inch main on Main Street to that line that on Gilboa Street. That makes sense to, to do that. Priority three would be a Main Street 12-inch water main from Franklin Street to Booster Street. So these next two, three, 
The next three are all that same line, just broken down into smaller phases. <coughs> um, John, as you're well aware, we've had close to a dozen breaks on, oh gosh, on yeah. this line from Franklin to basically Route 16. And tomorrow we'll be fixing. And we're going to be fixing one. another one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so from Franklin Street, well, it's on Main Street. From Franklin Street to the booster station okay. is probably the first phase. Yep. And then from Booster Street up to, say, Rydell. Booster Station to Rydell. Yep. And then from Rydell up to basically the, the common yep. uh, Church okay. Street. Yep. <clears throat> so again, that's an old cast iron line. Uh, we had one day a few years back, we had three breaks on the same day on that line. That's <laughs> within a half a mile of each other. Yep. Is that when we got the new engine? <laughs> that was another. No, that was <laughs> and you drained it all. <laughs> well, let's practice. Um. That was man truck. <laughs> With the new engine. <clears throat> so no, you know, you didn't put down any public safety impact or. Um. Yeah, the rest of these I didn't really put in the comment section. Um, like I said, these are all projects that, that need to be done. Um, I know John's done a section of paving already on, on Main Street there, so that may shift around where the priority on this would be. You know, we may want to look at going from Booster Street to Rydell and Rydell to Church before we do Franklin to Booster, just because Franklin to Booster has already been paved. <clears throat> I would say there's obviously those those especially a line that big would would be a public safety issue. Well, that's. But I think we need some <coughs> yeah, input from water sewer. <coughs> so this line is the main transmission line that goes from the wells and the booster station up to <coughs> the Church Street storage tank, which basically provides water to everything above Glen Street. And everything from the cemetery on West Street, you know, from there beyond, kind of everything up that end of town. So if we lose that water line, you have no water in that whole end of town. <clears throat> so it's basically some of the same thinking was the reason we were one of the reasons we replaced that booster station as well. Exactly. Because we would lose that, we would lose <coughs> everything up there. Not only was it a life safety issue with someone going into a confined space with a water and up to the electric, yeah. up to the electrical <laughs> boxes. Um, but if you, if you leave, if you lose that line. Yeah, we had nothing to fill. We had no way to get water up right. to that tank, which supplies water to that whole end of town. <coughs> And that also provides a portion of your fire protection for downtown too. It's the other 250,000 gallons that if if you have a high demand, there's valves that open up that take water from there and bring it down to downtown. <coughs> so you lose 25% of your fire protection there. So that's why I actually gave those priority numbers because that line is kind of a priority line more so than some of these other ones that are, you know, back roads, side roads, yeah. uh, like Cemetery Street, you know, that one I know you want to pave this year, so mm -hmm. there's like 400 feet of water main that we should have place before we do that. <clears throat> I think, you know, that needs to be kept in mind because it's somehow recorded, uh, Mary, uh, because, you know, otherwise somebody new coming on when I'm gone or some of us are gone, it needs to be there so that they are aware of it, you know. So if you could elaborate yeah, I'll put, I'll a little put additional bit notes in there yeah. and do some write-ups on these right. if you want. Yeah. Which brings to mind, I don't think I've heard the word RISV report used in a very long time. You probably need a new one, right? <laughs> how old when I first got on, was, well, the RISV yeah. report, that's what, 20 years old yeah, now? If yeah, probably. Unless we dig it out and look at it. 
needs to be. It's it's extinct. It doesn't even yeah. doesn't even apply anymore. <laughs> Probably. But it was good, and it gave us some yeah, absolutely. thoughts. And although you know, financially we weren't able to do a lot with it, but okay. So then number six would be the uh, Northwest Main. There's an eight inch water main there. Um, we have about 550 feet left to connect to complete that loop. Um, the plans from the engineers and everything up until, I don't remember what year we did that. It was four or five years now. Yeah. Um, somebody asked if they could connect and we had water to all the, all the houses on that road. So we're like, yeah, sure. So, you know, they, they paid the connection fee and we went to went to connect them and there was no water line on the road. So they, yeah. <laughs> they had run water lines through people's backyards off of Church Street to get water to the houses all on one side and they ran a water line about... Couldn't find the main in the street. <laughs> <laughs> they ran a, water, a, a one inch water line from, from uh, Church, Church, Church Street all the way down the, the side woods. of the road yeah. to... I forget that guy's the house. Those are the columns. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we looked at it and said, yeah, sure, we got water here. We got, you know, all these houses have water. So then me and John and <laughs> we had uh, Rock to come dig it. And we put in like yeah, 600, six, six or 700 feet of water line to get, <laughs> yeah. so that we could get water to the house that had already started construction. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, but they did have a T that was plugged when we dug it up in the main. <laughs> yeah. So the, the intention was to have a water line there at one point. They just never finished it. So we had about 550 feet in order to complete that loop. Um, that would be better water quality for you know the, the houses on that road, and it would also give you a, a second route for the water to come from the Church Street tank to get it down to Main Street, because right now it only goes up Common Street, you know, Church Street. And it doesn't go down north of north this way. And then priority seven was the. North Street 12 inch water main from Gilboa to the dead end. Um, it's about 4,350 feet of 12 inch water main. Uh, this one was a higher priority at one point, but now they, they put in a cistern up at that project up on top of the hill. And this priority, I guess, would jump up some if we ever looked at developing that connector road between Gilboa and Sutton. Um, because we would want to run this line up and loop it around to get the fire protection and everything needed to expand and uh, develop that property over there. So that's that one. And like I said, the rest of these are a bunch of small roads that are with old cast iron or AC pipe um, that we've had breaks on over the last few years. And um, like I said, we need to to look at and like I said me and John get together and we discuss what it looks like his his projects might be and where his some of his priorities for paving are um, so that would kind of dictate what the priority is if we can try to get some of these lines done prior to paving a lot of these are very fragile pipes <sighs> as, as you found it. <laughs> <coughs> so that, that's how we find our weak Weak pipes. We give the fire chief a new truck and say, <laughs> send them out, let them play. Do you have the uh, stats on non account water? Unaccounted for? Unaccounted for. Yeah, we do it every year. Um, that was one of the things that I was going to touch on when Ellie was asking how much water the chief uses. And I'd said, me and the chief go round and round about this because I have to report how much unaccounted for water every year um, we have. So we have to account for all the water that we use. So we pull water out of the gallon out of the ground if we pull 10 million or say 100 million gallons of water out of the ground we need to account for all that water through billing customers or what the fire chief uses or John keeps track of what the street sweeper uses and all that stuff through flushing everything else so we need to meter everything and the, the state allows you to have up to 10 percent unaccounted for and that's through leaks and everything else that you have in the system so uh, we are under 10 percent <coughs> currently um, so every year it was like I was asking the chief I need a letter from you saying how many gallons of water you use for fire protection but last thing on his mind is how many gallons of water am I using while I'm trying to put out a fire so it's it's been a struggle between us so 
I estimated 80,000 gallons one year. I sent it into the state, and they said, nope, you don't have a letter from the chief. We don't count it. So I was at a meeting one time with the lady that reviews them, and I says, look, so the fire chief isn't worried about how much water he's using. I don't know if he's worried I'm going to bill him for the water or what. I said, but I can't get a letter from him telling me how much he doesn't know. She's like, oh, well, then use the standard industry of 10%. So I'm like, what do you mean 10%? She's like, well, 10% of whatever you pull out of the ground, we estimate they use for fire protection. Okay, there you go. That's so then, the question I was asking. So. so then I said, okay, so the next year I submitted it, and 10% was 8.9 million gallons instead of 80,000 gallons, and they accepted it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, whatever. <clears throat> so. Okay. so the nature of these brake stents, because that was my question. Uh, you circumference brakes. Circumference brakes? Yeah. Circle brakes. On most of them. The yeah. one when they were playing with the That was a water hammer. <laughs> that was a what? Water hammer. Yeah. Shut the line down too quick. So what happens is sometimes if you shut a valve, which could be the case if you have a brand new truck with nice new valves when they're flowing and they just shut it off quick, it sends a shut. You ever, like in your house, if you yeah. shut the water off real quick, you the get pipes. that. Yep. And that's on a half inch line. Now imagine it on a, on a six or an eight inch line. <laughs> so it sends a lot of shock down that pipe. And so they got that new truck and they said, hey, can we go train it? And I go, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you need I to. didn't realize because for me, I wouldn't even have thought to go down to that area they went to because right. I know they're fragile pipes. I would have sent them up to the school with a 12 or 16 oh, inch new, line. New ductile iron they're pipe. Down, they're down slamming hoses. <laughs> Yeah. What made you think it was leaking? The ground lifted? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Dave called. Geyser? <laughs> Literally, it was. Dave, Dave called me. He goes, I think you got a leak down by the ball field. I'm like, all right, maybe it's just groundwater. And I come around the corner, and it was coming out of the ground about this high <laughs> across the entire road. It was like an undercarriage wash driving through. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a water break. <laughs> yeah. And then as I'm coming down, I see the fire truck next to the ball field. I'm like, oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, that one, that, that was a good break. That split right down the top of the whole pipe. We actually, <coughs> you cut a section out and yeah. brought it to the station. It's still left. I'll show you. Yeah, so pretty interesting. We should bring it here and set it on the table. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> a little heavy. I got a piece of that on my window, so too. <laughs> a reminder. Huh? Oh, yeah. <coughs> all right, so that's all I have. Like I said, there's, it's just a bunch of different water mains in here, different streets, um, all the older cast iron pipes. Um, some of them are increasing the size to increase fire flow and, and uh, fire protection in different areas of town. All right. Well, we thank you for your information yes. and for coming to visit with us for a bit. Thanks. Have a good one. On deck, we have our town engineer, Bill Cundiff. And he is going to present to us a project. I always love coming to see you, Pete. For a bridge, I believe. <laughs> um, sell us a bridge? <laughs> can sell you a bridge. And it's in Douglas, actually. <laughs> um, but now, I guess it's being referred to as the Bad Luck Pond Outlet Bridge. Historically, we've called it the Cedar Street Bridge, yeah. but Mass DOT is naming it the Bad Luck Pond Outlet Bridge. Um, you may recall back in 2011, we had that bridge shut down by Mass DOT due to some structural issues. As a result of that, we reacted quickly, got a quick design from McGuire Group. Um, and we were lucky enough to work with Mass DOT and mm -hmm. Highway. Highway did much of the labor to implement the design, and um, Mass DOT donated a lot of the components mm -hmm. in the bridge. Mm -hmm. So the cost of that repair was minimal. It was. That was the upside. The downside was it was a temporary fix. It was a 10-year bridge when we built it. Okay. And then <clears throat> when, when was that? 2011. Yep, it was in service a week, and then somebody hit it and knocked it all and killed her again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so so uh, we did take the opportunity to submit under a new grant program last year uh, for, to Mass DOT for the Small Br Bridge Repair Program, mm -hmm. and um, that's for bridges between 10 and 20 foot span. This qualifies under that program. We were denied last time we submitted, so we resubmitted the grant application again. And we were awarded the grant of $500,000 towards design and construction costs. Um, 
So once we were notified of the award, we contacted our consultant and started having them crunch some numbers. And there were a couple of assumptions, and that this is their narrative on the next couple of pages. Um, they're looking at two options. If the existing abutments are reusable, that's the preferred option for them. Obviously, it will be less expensive to just seat some steel beams on the existing abutments. Um, and they're estimating that that cost would be between 400 and 600,000. Option two is presuming we cannot reuse those abutments and we would have to basically install a brand new concrete box culvert in place of the bridge. Um, and they're estimating that that would cost between 600 and 950,000. That's including the design cost. Um, the, the design would, currently the, the structure has enough width for one vehicle passing at a time. Has no ability for pedestrians to cross safely. They have to go into the travel lane to cross. When we were out there several times, we've seen people crossing. So it, it appeared to me, anyway, that it does get crossed by pedestrians mm -hmm. somewhat frequently. Was it that contest Greenway challenge or something like that? Did, don't they use that? Oh, I don't know, John. Do you know? I'm not sure if they go Yeah, I think they did. Did they? Um, with bikes and runners. Mm -hmm. But the <coughs> Greenway Challenge, I don't believe, always goes down. They'd probably no, close they the road for that they did this anyway. Year, but, yeah. Yeah. They, they would close it. But but this is just, you know, conflicting traffic between pedestrians. Yeah, yeah, and, no, I understand that. Yeah. Um, so, so what the repair would do, it would create two lanes of travel as well as a sidewalk for pedestrian access. Um, it would basically bring it up to Mass DOT bridge standards. Yeah. Um, which is what, what the goal is. So we did get notified only recently, which is why I'm coming here at the 11th hour um, and with, with the engineer's design and cost estimates. Um, and so we're still planning on taking the remaining balance with the unfunded balance, which in worst case would be 450,000. We're looking to supplement that with chapter 90 funds. Um, we're also looking into exploring the Complete Streets program. Perhaps that could be a candidate to qualify under this. But those are going to be a little ways out for us to mm -hmm. get on that docket. We are looking for alternate so sources of funding. But to be conservative, the request that we're putting in for is the worst case scenario, which is 450000 Okay. Any questions for Bill? Um, yeah, Bill, what was the, the first option? The amount? first option amount is uh, between 400 and 600,000. And that's if the abutments, current yeah. abutments are in good sure. shape. Yeah. John and I, I are skeptical. I believe they're not going to be, to be honest with you, everyone, that they won't be. They were there. We reused them in 2011, yeah. so yeah. my feeling is no, they're not going to be sufficient. Okay. Um, the bridge has served us well. Um, there are no issues with it right now, but we don't want to have a situation like we had last time and we have to shut the road down on an emergency basis and then mm -hmm. take us a long time to, you know, we're trying to be a little proactive here. That's sure. why Bill's <coughs> here and that's why we put in for the grant and what have you. Yeah. <coughs> And frankly, I, I, I'm pleased we, we were awarded the $500,000 mm -hmm. towards Absolutely. the project. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's an opportunity for us to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Is that it, Bill? Um, is there going to be any more uh, what rulings as far as needing to take more land? That remains to be seen. Um, if, if the, as you know, as I indicated, the width of the bridge yep. is, let's say this, we're going to widen it to two lanes yep. and add sidewalks. If the sh survey shows that we need some eminent domain takings, we will need to pursue that in the future. That, this does not include that. Right. Okay. 
if there are no um, sidewalks on the roads on either side, Cedar Street all the way, why would you need them on the bridge? And it's Mass TOT standard, first of all. Otherwise, you wouldn't get the money. Yeah. And, and they gave us a waiver when we had the bridge yeah. now was 17 feet wide. Yeah. Yeah. They gave us yeah. a waiver to do that bridge back then. Mm -hmm. Sensible question, though. I it think is. It's quite honest. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is a safer approach. I mean, no, I agree. Yeah, on a road, you have the shoulders and you can take advantage of that. When it constricts down to a bridge, you need those guardrails. And if you don't provide access for pedestrians, they're in the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and besides that, there's a nasty corner there. Sure. Oh, there that is. Could Absolutely. Be. Yeah, I, I imagine the grade elevation will change too because right now it goes down and then mm -hmm. it comes up. And yeah. So it might make it safer from that aspect yeah. too. That corner is horrible. Any other questions for Bill in regards to this project? Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Good luck. Thanks, Bill. Will I see you tomorrow or Thursday here for a meeting with State Fire Marshal and Building Inspector and whatnot? If you want, I'm happy to attend. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Have a good day. See you, Bill. All right, Mr. Administrator. Sorry about that confusion earlier, but no problem. I go to where people send me and then I look and I don't explore myself either. I think I'm going to give some feedback to okay. Civic Plus about the way that works. Because the same thing works with our news flash. It only pulls up. If you click on more items, there's a lot more being posted than appears on the front page. And I don't know that people need to. Maybe it's just a, a bigger button that says more events, but unfortunately, a disclaimer that says this is not a this yeah. is only a partial listing that might actually help people understand it. They need to, to look yeah. at deeper. Yeah. Um, I think we've been using these forms for a long time. They do serve a purpose. Uh, you know, it's nice summary. <coughs> I think that some combination of the way I prepared this memo and the way this looks is what we need to tend toward. Um, because the first thing we, we need to start from with some projects is just a description of the asset. What is it, what is it that we have now? Because I don't know that everybody, I certainly, you talk about it in theory, but when you actually have to sit down and spec out a project, then it becomes a lot more detailed. That's kind of the exercise we went through with the town's radio system for all its mm -hmm. public safety departments. We sat there with a whiteboard and we started actually writing things down. Everybody remembered something mm -hmm. else about mm -hmm. the system. But if I understand this correctly, I mean, you have your base and then you have your um, repeaters, which I think are handling your both transmission. That's just the transmission piece, not the receiving piece. So you have antennas for receiving as well on Correct. fixed locations. Correct. Uh, all around town, and then each vehicle has a mobile radio. Correct, with with a uh, vehicle repeater, on the police side with anyway, a with, a, with repeater. a vehicle repeater in it as well for the portables. So if you get, you get too far away from the cruiser, instead of going to the repeater on Church Street, go to the repeater in the vehicle, which then repeats to the Church. And then each individual has a portable radio. And then the fire department is a pager mm -hmm. for the call. So there's, there's actually a lot of assets at play here. And if, if my understanding of this is correct, the capabilities are quite different between our, de our departments. So we're talking about four departments, police, fire and ambulance, highway, and water because they all need to communicate to each other. Mm -hmm. And it's not unusual for individual incidents to, to require three or all four of those oh. departments to coordinate. Mm -hmm. And therein lies the problem. So in the past, it, it seems like the approach has been replace what is most broken <laughs> and leave the rest for the, another day. And so I think the last round was police. And you got some radios out of a study that Chief Foley did, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering what I'm looking at you because the time frame was four or five years ago. Yeah, no, it's 11 or 12. Is it that long? 11 or 12 yeah. years ago? No, 11 or 2011, 2011 or 12. Or 12. Yeah. So that's, 
yeah. six or seven years. It was a, and I think that was 150 grand out of stabilization. And that was for portables, because your repeaters are older than that. We do know that. So the repeaters in the police department are eight years old. Um, so you're going to have to help me here. <laughs> Pol the police can get everything if they need to, right? So you can get low band, high band, and VHF. Correct. It takes an effort to do that. You can yes. hear everybody, but to speak to them, you need to switch channels. Um, not necessarily. It just, uh, it's been just a patch system that, um, you know, we're, on the police side, we're trying to get 100% coverage, which is impossible, mm. um, unfortunately. But we were, we're close to it. And in order to do that, we had to do very strange things with simulcasting on different bands, meaning VHF to UHF, and then coming back out on VHF and just all over the place uh, to make it work. So it does need to be simplified and, and, and trimmed down. Yeah. Every single patch <coughs> point is a potential failure point. Mm -hmm. and it's just you know, all of these were lessons learned in the Rhode Island tragedy at the, the station nightclub fire when circuits were overloaded and people couldn't talk to each other and it was just a communication fiasco. 911 was the same thing in New York, although it's such a grand scale, we shouldn't compare to it. Your department, fire and ambulance, you have low band and high band. We have high band in my cruiser and in the engines, uh, in the ambulances. However, we also have UHF, which is low band that converts to UHF, which is, get me wrong, but the, the UHF frequencies are like in the 400s, correct? And the high bands are in the 150s. So we have some that are UHF, and which are in the 400s. Right. What we're trying to transition to is to come off low band because nobody's on it. And so when we go mutual aid, we can't communicate we have firefighters in the building they can't talk to the incident commander now if I happen to be there as a safety officer they can talk to me but that's splintering off and so we you're almost Rolling the dice. almost freelancing and <clears throat> and hoping things go well you know they should be able to talk directly to the person in charge of the incident so we've got portables through some capital money last year to replace so that at least the officers all have uh, VHF or high band we're trying to fix that whole situation with this. So again, VHF a is high band. High band, correct. And what was the low band? Not just called low band. That's what, 39 yeah. megahertz? Yeah. yeah. You were 33, 30, 96, and we're 33, yeah. we're 33, 96, you were 39.6. Correct, yeah. For the police. We have three categories on the board, so this, I think I'm trying to help. I have like a picture of it if you want to look at it. Low band, it. UHF, VHF. Right. What's UHF? Is that high band or is VHF high band? You know, VHF. Brandon could probably explain that better than I could. Yeah, VHF. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's, yeah, it's strange, but VHF is called high band. UHF, ultra high frequencies, is just UHF, which is your 482 megahertz, which is what we're on right now. Is that low band? That's ultra high band. Oh, that's better. Uh, as far as well, no, coverage I mean, it, goes, it's, um, it's just, uh, you don't have to tell me yeah. all of that. Just, yeah, it's better or it's not better. It's the low band one that I'm... Low band it, is bad. It has bad. no letters in it. Right, low band is okay. bad uh, because it's coverage-wise and also you can't buy equipment anymore. That's for, what for the highway band. department has strictly. Right. Low band. Low band. Yeah. And water. And Bob, we have the same frequency yeah. we share. You can talk to each other. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, There's tough, tough mm -hmm. to replace equipment because they just don't make it anymore. So sure. it's ultra expensive um, to find it, or it needs to be found used. Um, and then the coverage isn't as good as it would be on on VHF or high band. I personally, I like VHF, the high band, as the best coverage. Uh, UHF, too many things can affect the signal. Uh, Why do these sound like TV sets or radios or something? Because yeah, that back in the day, yeah. that's that's yeah. Uh, that's how TV, you know, TV. So it's so channels. it's been around for a long, 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 long time. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so the Bruins are on UHF on TV 38. <laughs> yeah, that would be UHF. And the creature yeah. double feature. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You're, watching that on, you're watching that on UHF. With the snow yeah. in the air. <laughs> right, UHF. So then again, like are you saying? Baby monitor and cordless phone. The old cordless phones. The new cordless phones are even out of that now. Yeah, they're way up. Well, that's yeah. what I'm wondering about is UHF and VHF the 
the sign of the future, or is it the past? More VHF is the sign of the future. Yeah, the UHF is. Correct. You know, they could have people with baby monitors stomping on their signal, so a baby crying could come over and block their signal when they're trying to communicate. Well, it was the baby stomping on me. Yeah. Forget the monitor. <laughs> you know? The wave of the future is digital, yeah. but that's out oh, of our, okay. I think that's beyond um, fiscally what something we can Yeah, consider. it might be overbuilding. When, when Right. Yeah, the and, day uh, will come, but yeah. it will, it will. But at this point, and what do um, towns our size, police, fire, water, sewer, highway have? No, I don't. You don't know. Depends on the town. Yeah, I just don't want to yeah. overprice ourselves. No, so the I th well, I think we did this analysis, right? So Northbridge is the only town that still is on low band. Oh, they actually just finished their VHF. They just finished a VHF conversion. Okay. So sure. Douglas is now the only town. Pretty much. Okay. Pretty your, much. Your so who's who's still? I think Millville. No, they went up too. They're right. What the? Yeah, Millville and and Menden because they they have a regional dispatch out there. Yeah, that's right. A couple yeah. towns. So and what are they on? VHF now. Okay. Okay. Menden might be just finishing up getting getting there. Okay. And so Northbridge is. All so the way they to just VHF. completed VHF. Okay, because yeah. that was in your memo. You can see how well his last. This is now going back to last summer that we did this Mark. brain dump on the whiteboard with all the chiefs and okay. we got to have, we had our expert in. But the long story short, I don't think the conclusion changes at all. Yep. Um, the recommendation is take everything we have, get whatever trade in value we can get for it, and just convert the entire town to VHF. Yep. So, so everybody can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. All the equipment is standard. We use the frequency. We have gone out and gotten frequency to reserve our spot so that we don't lose that opportunity. It's what fifteen hundred bucks a year to, to, to have access to that VHF, <coughs> and that would at least bring the town into the point where mutual aid is trouble free, and internal communications are trouble free. But police already have the VHF. We are on VHF. So well, we sign the cast on all all of them. Yeah, once. but you don't. Because you have so to. you don't. Because we have to. You don't. They're not part of the 51 portables and 20, or, uh, yeah, and mobiles and the 30 pages. And they are. They are part yeah, of that. Yeah, be. Yeah, because, because those portables are UHF right now. Yeah. The portables are UHF. Okay. So, Matt, you're estimating 173,000, of which 165,000 is from the general operating? Yeah, we would, we would hope that water would be able to pick up about seven grand for their equipment. Just well, because it's an enterprise fund and that's part and of their operating costs. Conference with them. Yeah, he's well, right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm here. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know if he talked to you before. Is my well, we don't want them to be left out. I think that's the point. And it wasn't but driving the bus. What's driving the bus is, uh, to me, is the problem where if anybody who's in the building can't speak to somebody who's yeah. outside. Yeah. And the chief will explain this better than I will. But if you have too many crossband repeaters going at once outside oh, the incident, they interfere mess. with one another. It's a mess. So Which <coughs> we don't want incident commanders to arrive at a scene and have a whole checklist of things that are not related to the incident that they have to do to make sure everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to flick this switch on my dashboard to turn mm -hmm. my repeater yeah. on or off, and I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do that. Meanwhile, the people truck, inside the yeah. building are like, help me, yeah. and he's out there checking the radios. We don't want that. Uh, that's really bad practice, and we also want to get the best coverage we can because we do know from time to time we have, you know, police officers will go downgrade, so they might park the cruiser and then go downhill someplace in town, and their signal gets weak or it gets, gets lost. And it's a safety thing for our employees, but I think the most important thing is being able to talk to each other mm -hmm. in a reliable way, mm -hmm. eliminating a lot of these fail points. We had a fail point. There's a crossband repeater up at the water tower, and the batteries died. And it took us a while to get our consultant up there to fix it. And so you, it wasn't working. The batteries were dead and corroded, and he's the only one who knows how to do it. But we need to eliminate those those weaknesses you know, in the town's communication backbone. So that's why it's on here. Um, frankly, I was somewhat relieved. It was not as quite as expensive mm -hmm. as as uh, it could be. I guess the point is you don't have multi 
Yeah, this gets really ugly when you have multiple fire stations or other outlying places that have to be connected with redundant lines. Then it starts to get really expensive. But we're not there. We're not doing that. And we had a situation in a town about a year and a half or so ago where um, they arrived on a scene and a mutual aid company came in town, went in to do a search of, to, for occupants and got in trouble, called a mayday, which means we need help, come get us. Yeah. Nobody heard them because there was a malfunction. Antennas weren't working or were broken on the radios. But what had also happened with him, and it happens to me with this radio sometimes, is you wear it under your gear to protect it from the heat, and it gets bumped, and it changes channel. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. He was on the wrong channel, not his fault. And it just so happened a another dispatch center, the next town over, heard him calling a mayday. Nobody on the fire ground heard him call a mayday. He was, was fortunately... The fire was in Oxford, but it was, was in an Oxford. Auburn. It was an Auburn captain, and he was able to self-extricate they found a way and, and dived through a window to get out and yeah. the room flash. But what we're trying to avoid is the liability and the, we want the safety of our members. Um, the last way you want to find out and correct your problems is because NIOSH comes in for a line of duty death or something like that. So that's when you, mm -hmm. you're trying to avoid the worst case scenario and, and really um, fix problems before they, yeah. before they get out of, out of control. And to match point, um, when you have a number of repeaters in different trucks, um, we went to a crash right before I was chief. And I was at home, and I heard the crash coming. It was up on Northbridge at Walmart, coming off the highway. And it was some severe injuries. They called us for an ambulance. We got there. And our ambulance trashed all their repeaters, so there was no communica radio communication that was able to happen on that whole incident. <laughs> and I'm trying to call the people on my phone going, shut your repeater off, shut your repeater off. No, not happening. <laughs> and those are just the situations you're trying to, trying to avoid. So that pretty much closes your docket. I think we'll, we've got to take all this, yep. pull it into the spreadsheet to show people just how much is involved and then go from there and Jean and I will provide you with what your budget is on Friday and you can start making decisions. Mm -hmm. on, and I guess the size of the budget is going to really kind of determine a lot. Mm -hmm. um, by way of update Mr. Chairman we did apply for the grant for uh, trucks for highway because it was due on March 18th and basically this we tried to follow a scheme that would be minimally disruptive to the committee's work. So the concept was if we put in for a grant that was exactly the same size as the cost of the truck and the match would be the town potentially going to town meeting and voting for a truck. So in other words, we're trying to get two trucks for the price of one, but there would still be a truck in the budget if we didn't get the grant. You, you would have that option if you chose to do that. Um, we scored you know, real high on the spreadsheet for all of the, the problems with the trucks because they basically are mosquito control vehicles. They didn't put out enough poisonous fumes to, to wipe out a colony of insects because they are old. And the 96 is way worse mm -hmm. than the 2001s. The 2001s are still very poor performers. We lose points because their useful life is so short. So in other words, by taking that out of service, you don't get the complete pollution bang for the buck that you would if they had 10 years of life left on mm -hmm. them. Now, if you think about that, that, um, that logic is a little bit obtuse after a while because it's kind of like if we don't replace the truck, then we might be stuck having them in service for right. five years. Keep running it. <coughs> and I think they'll see that when they go through the scoring because it's such an obvious thing. And we don't know who was applying. We right. just don't. So we put in for it. And yes. I know Matt really worked hard on this. That was, was a, <laughs> a ton of information <laughs> so needed. Way too this. much information. Yeah. I feel like I live in the truck now. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys were scrambling all over, looking at serial numbers and, and um, other data points. So we made a and good we did get a good list of 
vehicles. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that was very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was distributed. And we update that every single year. We yeah. take a lot of things in and out of service. Well, but it's just that uh, if you're not working with them yeah. day to day, you know, it's, it's just <laughs> it's a nice list to have. So that's where we are now. What, did, what was your, as a committee, you decided you wanted to use that method? And uh, before Friday, I should just do with that a, a score sheet that allows it to implement that method. I think it was the method uh, where it was four points. One was must do, and there was a should do, and then this there's one. a could do, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's from that presentation. I think yeah. that's yeah. really helps you. Yeah, it does. And obviously, the, uh, in my opinion, the must-dos would be anything public safety that's not working correctly or, you know, things like that. But I think we have to grapple with the issue, though, of the, of the water system. Is that, you know, it's kind of overwhelming to look at <laughs> True. the expense. And, and it's a, it, how much of your system is it that you're asking for? A good 25% of your system is, is in your request. Right? Or more? Around there. Yeah, probably more than 25 percent. So, you can't just keep saying, well, that's expensive, so we'll do it next year, we'll do it next year. Yeah, because if you look back when I first submitted them, the prices have substantially gone up since mm -hmm. then. Yeah. It's getting the return on the dollars that's... Yeah, that's the hard part, because you're yeah. you know, It's not making you any money. <clears throat> but at some point, it's going to save you from... Waste of money. <laughs> yeah. Just to um, give you guys a heads up, because I'm, I know I'll be slammed down on it, I liked your comment about the 10%. And, uh, and so, therefore, I think that that should be town meetings' uh, contribution to these things and the rest of it should be betterment to the to the people that live on the or use the water on the road. What are you talking about contribution from the town, the ten percent? Is that what Yeah, it was partial, you know, here. And and, and you had said, well, for the booster station it was fifty fifty, but with what um, the ten percent that the, the lady that you had lunch with or whatever said is what uh, you attribute to fire use, the water that you can't um, account, account for, for yeah. would be the the fire water and that, that it seemed to be a lot of gallons of water too. I so don't know that that really matches up with what the town should kick in though versus what's yeah, okay, unaccounted water. Like I said, you got to look at, if we don't run water and sewer down to these areas of town, you're not going to get your tax revenue. So. If you want to, if you right. want to forego four million dollars a year in taxes because you don't want to pay fifty percent of two million dollars, you know you're losing three million dollars your first year. Yeah, by I, not doing a I, 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 I'm just so telling just, you where I'm coming yeah. from, yeah. and I'll, <coughs> I, I'm just putting it out there that that's the way I feel. So. But now, MassWorks, if if that becomes, we'll that have a long conversation about MassWorks tonight. Grant as well from right. the state looking at development. And stuff. So we so would we might be on the hook for fifty percent of fifty percent, which right. not, starts to take it into the realm no, of possibility. <coughs> if if the there's an economic development opportunity that would generate the tax revenue for the town, and that's the important thing is that we just spend a million to make four million a year, and of course you would, because right. it's that's after five years that's twenty million that you wouldn't have had. So that's if you that's a thought. Five years, it's kind of like a right. Year. <laughs> um, the economics actually become very kind of cl yeah, it's very clean. It's right. very clear how many customers could I ever possibly add right. to this pipeline, and whatever I couldn't add and recoup is that's the overage that I need to cover somehow, either through grant or through town subsidy. So it, it um, you know it begs the question of the most populous areas of town: the would people connect when they? have the opportunity to connect with water. They have no choice, but with sewer they could hold out on their septic until it has to be renewed. Or could uh, they yeah, continue they to build septics on their property until they ran out of space, then they have no, to connect. No, if it's going sewer. by, then you have to connect. Okay. If you have the ability to connect, then you need to connect as opposed to uh, put it aside. <laughs> So 
So are you going to pr uh, provide us, Matt, with the, uh, with the ranking sheet? So I'll take this, and I'll make it into a grid that you can... Okay. It's going to be a really big grid. <laughs> oh, say so. It's usually... <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an 11 by 17 paper. Right. It's usually what we get, so... But I'll try to uh, turn that around. We're, we're trying to get a preliminary budget out tonight. I'm trying. I think we'll get there. And that's going to take a big burden off me of the time. But organizing the, the things that we don't do this year into a plan is, yeah. is so the, the committee's work isn't done with finalizing the warrant articles for this year's town meeting. You've got to keep working after that to where does everything fall out. Because that'll help us. I mean, that helps us sharpen our pencil and be efficient about seeking grants. Mm -hmm. If we know what's coming up in the next couple of years, and yeah. we target all our activity, because Bill and I kind of, we feel like the horse got ahead, uh, the cart got a little bit ahead of the horse this time. We applied for a bunch of grants that we knew we could win. Now we got them. So there's, it's going to kind of push us in a certain direction in terms of capital decisions. Mm -hmm. We got 100000 for an ambulance. To, to not use that before yeah. the contract expires would be foolhardy. Same thing with a half million dollar grant for a bridge. Um, if we got the grant for the trucks, then we would we would use it mm -hmm. because it requires scrapping the trucks. So mm -hmm. and that kind of takes a decision making authority out of your hands and pushes it towards what's grant funded. What we want to do in future years is say well, this is what the town really needs. We will focus all our efforts on grants to to try to get capital plan implemented. Mm -hmm. I think the residents appreciate that too. Mm -hmm. I think the one change from what we've talked to you about before is that I think we've really pretty much decided that the roof of this building is a very complex undertaking. So I, without speaking out of turn, I think Bill and I and members of the building facility committee that are aware of this are working on coming up with a plan and we would put in for green communities, not this year, but next year. Just be, uh, those four chiller units and all the holes and the passive yeah. duct system and everything else that's up there, it's too much. <laughs> you know, it's just too much I to wing know, I've it. Never been up there. Maybe I think you found you don't want to wing it with the, just, you know, just you trying to replace the boiler and finding exposing all the <coughs> asbestos and clean up and all that. Just like that was just one item. It's not. Yeah. With a bunch of other so things that are... Our green community's effort is focused now on the police department and their heating pooling system and trying to get rid of all the electric heaters, mm -hmm. go to a heat pump system similar to the yes. library. Long term, <coughs> that makes sense because that gives you climate control in every single space in what is now the police department. So if we ever move them out, and we could use that space potentially for a vault for the town clerk's mm -hmm. needs because now you would have an mm -hmm. air controlled air con that would be taken care of um, so, so it kind of comes together and makes sense to do that project and that's only 80,000 as opposed to 350 so it's a little bit more digestible piece and if we got it through green communities again it would be grant funds it wouldn't we wouldn't be looking at town meeting for it so did we ever talk to Neil and ten about the upstairs space, the def definite ruling on, on that? I think they kind of kicked it back to an existing report the town already has. Unless there's been a change in the code, we're required to sprinkle that because of the capacity. That your existing report is what we should rely on as far as they're concerned. So doesn't that again tie in something with water sewer because of the water? Well, the work that we would have to do in this building would be substantial. Yeah. Because you would need Trust a fire part service. Of this is small. <laughs> yeah. 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 But again, right. it's another. The main coming in here is, is easy compared to what you have to do inside. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. But again, that needs to be included. Yeah. I've already had that discussion with Adam anyway. Okay. Okay. We have any new business? Um, no, just um, new business, old business. But Jeannie and you were going to get together and 
once the budget is kind of. What we were really waiting for is for that gentleman to your left to be finished plowing snow. <laughs> <laughs> so we have yeah. some idea of what's left. <laughs> I hear you. For capital. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, and we're also, into if there's any uh, general fund budget available for capital, it will be because a couple of pieces fall in place around insurance. Are you feeling better about health insurance? Uh, we have a negotiation set up with collective bargaining units for the end of this week, so we should have an answer soon. Mm -hmm. We still don't have an answer for property and casualty. We have had an absolutely horrible year yeah. as a town. So our claims are running at hundred, anywhere from 160 to 150 percent over our premiums. We've had a couple of cruiser mishaps. We've had uh, a major, major, major mishap at the school. Yeah. So all of that collectively in terms of claims, it's nice to get a check from your insurance company. Just remember you are going to pay it back yes. over time yes. through increased premiums. So <laughs> yep. our, uh, we were told just this morning, and I, I will submit a budget with a placeholder, but we're about a 10% increase in property and casualty. So it's a thirty-two, thirty-three thousand dollar increase. So we just got to get a handle on all those little water pipes up at the school mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're killing us. Those claims are just killing us. Is that there really were two this fiscal year? It was the basement problem that we all went up there and looked at, and then there was the bigger problem in the lab. So what was the basement one? Mm -hmm. There was that, what was that room down in the, was it the guidance office or? The old shop, wasn't it? The old shop. The old shop in the middle school. There was water, moisture coming up through the through tiles the, and the tiles the were lifting. <sighs> and they, they figured that that was probably some sweating or some uh, water that never got drained from a capped pipe that came yeah. down, settled in between <coughs> the walls and then came up through the floor because there was nothing outside. Right. Should send that bill to whoever renovated. Yeah, it. yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make them pay our thirty-five thousand dollar increase. So you, you can only let water in the roof, for the gym. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> oh man. Yep. Yeah. That entire project is a testimony to the fact that the interviews conducted for owner's project manager, that's one of the most important thing municipal government does. And you can never consider price because you will pay and pay and pay if you have an OPM that is in the hand, in the, in the basket for the general contractor and just says, oh yeah, that's fine, that's fine, just go ahead and do it that way. That is not what the OPM's purpose is. They have to defend the town. I am scared to death of my own town. We're doing a $98 million school project and I have no idea who they're going to hire for an OPM. Believe me, they being on me. that, that committee, me. we had a lot of back and forth <coughs> and disagreements. And, yeah. So I think the law has been rewritten since then on designer selection law, and you cannot consider price at all. At all. No second envelope, <laughs> nothing. You have to get the most qualified, and only from then do you begin a negotiation. Because mm -hmm. it's going too bad too long. All right, that's off topic, sorry. Um, I do have uh, one other thing that, um, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, so you and Jean are going to kind of provide the capital committee with an array of sources? Yes. Okay. From where we the total get size the of the budget and where the money comes from, Good. yeah. Okay. Because I, I found that quite from your Monson. And that was one of the things that they went through. Although they have different, uh, more funds than we have. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. But, you know, we're not in the habit of, I don't think in the past, I can't see it anywhere where people have openly discussed how Chapter 90 funds are being applied. But I yeah. think that's a conversation that needs to happen in public. People re need to realize the Commonwealth kicks in 360000 a year. And that's where that comes from. Yeah. So the 360 plus the 500 for the small bridge grant, that's $860,000. But, but again, it has to be used for what it's yes. targeted for. Right. And again, 
getting back to the five-year plan. Right. But with Munson too, I mean, you had the federal government that came in and practically yeah. rebuilt the place, so they're right. probably probably right. in a little better shape than we are. <laughs> right, but I mean, we, we all went through it and picked out. No, absolutely. Good. Yeah, there's some input. Good input there, absolutely. Not that it all will pertain to. See, I have all my things labeled. And I can tell you that. I read it. <laughs> if you ever want to feel better, just get in your car. And do what I did the other day. I had to go into one socket for to go to the Polish deli, and uh, <laughs> they were having a major incident. And I think the combined age of the the two engines and the two police cruisers that were sitting there I was like, oh my gosh, this is so depressing. Mm -hmm. The engine looked like it was like it was out of a parade, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I don't, the Douglas hey, is better off. Been than there, that. Done that. <laughs> you have been there and done that, but that is not where you are right That's now. That's right. At all. That's right. You've come a long way. Yeah, I can't. I don't. Engine one, the old engine one, the antique. I I never did a call on it. Well, actually, we did one call on it, but it was in a, a parade piece that day. It yeah. Came back from the parade in Oxbridge. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember, you go downhill. You don't really need brakes until you get to the bottom. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. Do we have any old business? So our meeting is Friday. That's going to be a long one. Friday. Nine a.m. You want me to correct. order lunch, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> going to be Probably that one. <laughs> Where's that money coming from? <laughs> <laughs> I'll donate it so that you're no. oh. <laughs> preacher comfort. Did everyone get? The mm -hmm. capital minutes that I sent out, I sent out like a year's worth of minutes because I wasn't getting them. I sent them out a couple of weeks ago. We can no, do I, them now or we can I save them for Friday. I, I haven't. Haven't. No, I haven't, I haven't seen them. them. Do we have All right. Well, I'll All go right. back to my computer. Yeah. I sent, I printed them out, but I also, uh, pretty sure I sent, which we might even have, I don't think Mike Fitzpatrick was on capital then when I sent them out. I've been out for one meeting. You know, it sounds, Ellie, like you're. You might want to check your spam filter and make sure that you're getting these emails. Do you well, get them? Well, I the email I sent him last yesterday was because I went to the website mm. and all I saw were FinCom was meeting five times yeah. tomorrow or today. You know, so uh, and and they were on for next week too. But I didn't see Friday's meeting. I didn't see. Um, and, and usually I'm pretty good. I mean, I send everything to Chris, and um, and she always writes back, got it, you know, you know, thumbs up or whatever. It's just that we're so busy. So that's what happened is that the, the FinCom agenda has been revised a couple of times, and they've also posted a long series of meetings because they need to finish yeah, before the public yeah, hearing yeah. on August, uh, April 6th. Yeah. April, April 10th, sorry. April 10th. So okay. that, that's what caused all that traffic on the website was they posted multiple meetings. Yeah. And yeah. then revisions to their but agendas. But then I didn't so see anything there for, for right. capital. So I thought, well, maybe we aren't having a meeting. Maybe water sewer can't come. You yeah, know? no, it is kludgy. But if you click on the date, it was posted a week, over a week ago. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, um, but I, you know, and then um, Kent sent me back a response last night and said, what you're getting is emails. Yeah. So if there's something yeah, you're missing. Yeah, and then he sent one this morning, and I got it, too. Okay. So. That was just in case. Because yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, why is Ellen be Ellie asking me that? And then I'm like, I go back to my other meeting and my email, and I go, yep, see you Monday for the meeting. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, but that, that was, I just yeah, I sent the agenda for saying the correct date. I was like, oh, man. But you know what? I got the agenda for March 11th. Oh, I had that all printed out, ready to come this morning. So uh, then I realized, hey, today's not the 11th. I need to print out the 19th. But, uh, but I also I was had That's St. Patrick's Day you had there. <laughs> 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 you flying out for a whole week. <laughs> but I, I had emailed you when you responded to me because I just wanted to double check yeah. in, in case somebody, yep. and we didn't have a quorum, so people couldn't come. Right. And you did get back to me. The other thing was I thought, Oh gosh, maybe Caesar, he wasn't there the last one. Maybe he re needs a reminder. And I remember the reason we went with Tuesday was because Fitzpatrick couldn't make Mondays. Yeah. 
or no, no, he no, said no, it was either him or Caesar. Bad. Yeah, that's right. It, yeah. Every day it was somebody during who's, the day. Monday wasn't good for but us. But Caesar, I think it was Monday wasn't good that's for right. him. And and I think in the afternoons, I believe I heard Caesar say we're better for him than in the mornings. But I'm not sure. That's why if I don't mark it on my phone while I'm here, I'm dead in the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I have this little I, mess, because I don't like it. Because I actually look at my phone in the morning and go, okay, what do I have today? And if I hit, you know, every once in a while I'll miss something. I go, oh, man, I'm supposed to be something. Yeah, it would be a shame to miss bingo, wouldn't it, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> hey, what's today? <laughs> the 19th. Okay. <sighs> Move we adjourn? Second. I'll move we adjourn. Motion made to adjourn by Shirley, seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we adjourn at 1134.